sit yourself in cross legs just so that you're sitting evenly feeling like you're able to just find some levelness in the seat bones because levelness at the seat bones helps at levelness in the spine but also it's levelness at the feet as well so just have a wriggle about just see if you can feel that the feet are sitting evenly on the floor and then lift upwards driving the chest upwards drawing the shoulders down away from your ears look down at the floor at something that's not moving Just taking deep inhalations, deep exhalations, just listening to the sound of the breath. Just filling the lungs from the bottom to the top. Empty in the lungs from the top to the bottom. And then bring your hands into Namaste. Press the palms firmly together. Lengthen from the armpits into the elbows, the elbows into the heels of the hands. The heels of the hands up into the fingertips and then close your eyes with an, with an exhalation and just spend a little time listening to the breath As you inhale, aim to elevate the spine upwards. As you exhale, allow the chest to lower, but keep the spine elevating upwards. Just listening to the sound of the breath. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude. For something or someone or somewhere. Hold on to that feeling of abundance as you release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards. And then as you raise your head, gently allow your eyes to softly open. So staying on your left, just stretch your legs out, grab your belt if you've got one handy, and just take the belt out of a loop if it's in a loop so stretch your legs out in front have them hip width apart have the belt around the feet and then push the feet into the belt elevate the chest up to the ceiling try and slide the heels away from the hips lengthen out the backs of the calves turning the shins inwards Turning the fronts of the thighs inwards, lifting the chest up to the ceiling. 
So with each exhalation, just come forwards a little bit at a time. If you've got a bad back, just be cautious of coming forwards. But just breathe evenly and deeply, keeping the front chest lifted as you come forwards. So forward bending is good for period pains. So just lifting up into the chest and if you can reach your feet, then reach your feet. But coming forwards just with sensitivity, extending the chin and the chest upwards. We're not coming all the way down because we haven't warmed up, but we're just coming forwards just to see if we can keep the legs activated, keep the chest and the spine activated. Just a little bit at a time. Coming forwards. Keeping the head lifted, keeping the chin extending forward. Lifting the chin as much as you can to help to draw the shoulder blades in. And then gently release. And then just come down onto your knees, just moving your cushion out of the way. Keep your hands as wide apart as the mat. Turn your toes under and then come up into dog down. Listen to the sound of the breath. Allow the shoulder blade region to draw in, tilt in the tailbone and the seat bones up towards the ceiling in order to draw those shoulder blades in towards the front chest. Just listening to the sound of the breath. Letting your head hang down. Activating the legs, really straightening the legs, tightening the kneecaps, hitting the fronts of the thighs through to the backs of the thighs. Just spend a little time within the pose, just observing your balance. Balance of action, balance of just physical, gravitational balance. And then step your feet forwards. Just come up into a standing position and then get some blocks for your hands for half Uttanasana. Have your feet as wide apart as your mat. Turn your toes inwards. Lift up into the chest, driving the chest up towards the ceiling, driving the armpits open. As you raise your arms up, have the arms wide apart at first, just to give you space to lift up into the chest. And then hinge at the hips, keeping the back straight, keeping the arms lifted, keeping the head lifted. And then just bring your hands down to reach the floor, reach the blocks, but then keep the head lifted. Keep driving forwards with the chin. Turn the fronts of the legs in, so that the backs of the legs feel like they've broadened outwards. Lift the seat bones away from the backs of the thigh. Drive forwards with the chin. Just take deep inhalations, deep exhalations. So being on tip, fingertips just helps to lift from the wrists up into the armpit. If you go down any lower, then do, just gently does it. Just feel where your back is today. Stay higher if you need to just protect your back a little. If your back is okay, then come down and see if you can reach the floor. But not at the expense of losing the extension of the spine. 
losing the extension of the legs. Work those legs, kneecaps firmly into sockets, turning the thighs inwards, lifting the thigh muscle up towards the crease of the groin. Projecting the chin and the chest forwards. If you can, just reach around the backs of your heels. Keep the front chest lifted as you draw the body in for a forward bend. Breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. Just observe your observation. Observe whether your observation is as keen and as sharp as it might normally be. And then release your hands underneath your shoulders, projecting the chin and the chest forwards. And then come up into a standing position, bending the knees on the way up if you need to. And then just come into Tadasana, lifting up into the chest. Just breathing evenly, listening to the sound of the breath. And then stretch your arms out in front, interlock the fingers right into the webbing of the palms, turn the palms all the way out. Squeeze the outer elbows in and then raise your arms over your head. Listen to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. Pressing the feet into the floor, turning the fronts of the thighs inwards. Release your arms, swap the interlock of your fingers, and then turn the palms all the way out, raising your arms over your head. Gently release your arms and then come back into Tadasana. Get hold of your belt and then bring the belt over your left shoulder, so your right shoulder. So you're going to go Makasna, the head of the eagle, head of the cow. So lift up into the chest, tighten the kneecap. And then extend your left arm forwards, really spreading the palms, spreading both arms, spreading the palms of both arms, and then turn the palm all the way out. Rotate from the upper arm in the socket as you reach around behind you, and then bend the elbow, and then assist that arm up your back so just see how far so this shoulder for me is really stiff so i have to really assist that arm up the back I'm not getting very far today at all so i'm just going to take hold of the belt straight away i know that i'm going to need it and then reach up with the top arm extend into urdra hastasana with that top arm and then reach down and take hold of the belt so as you can see, I'll take hold of the hand, you might not need the belt. So as you can see, my arms are quite a long way from each other today. So this should really help to kind of open up the shoulders. So first of all, just breathe, breathe.
Breathe into the shoulders. Take deep inhalations, deep exhalations. Just see if you can just gradually walk the hands a little closer together. Just listen to the sound of the breath. Extending the elbows down to the floor, top elbow up to the shoulder, to the, up to the ceiling. into the breath. And then release the top arm. Just gently release the bottom arm. And then come back into Tadasana. So if there's restrictions in the shoulder, Observe that maybe it creates restrictions in the breath when you come into Gobi Kasana. So perhaps it's worthwhile just really focusing on the breath, trying to make the breath full and deep as you stay in the pose. Stretching the right arm forwards, turn the palm and then turning the upper arm in the socket as you reach behind you and then assist arm up your back with the other hand so I can feel that this hand goes a little bit further up and then raise your left arm up Just stretch out of the previous pose and then reach down take hold of the belt or get hold of your hands behind your back and then breathe evenly Observe if the breath is different. So long, slow, deep, deliberate breaths. Pulling the elbows apart, creeping the hands just a little bit closer together each time. And then gently release the top arm up to the ceiling. Just unwind the back arm and then stretch your arms down. Just listen to the breath. Extend your arms forwards, interlock the fingers, turn the palms all the way out and then raise your arms over your head. So again, just warming up the shoulders. Release the arms, swap the interlock of the fingers, turn the palms all the way out, and then again, just observe any difference. And then just gently release your arms. So we're going to do a bit of a variation of Uttanasana with the arms interlocked behind, with the, with the palm, palms interlocked, the fingers interlocked behind your back and then just straighten your arms and try and lengthen your arms away from the back of your, um, from your seat bones. And then bring your feet hip width apart and turn your toes inwards. Spread your toes. Lift your shins out of the ankle sockets, lift the kneecaps up, lift the thighs up towards the hips, lift up into the chest, stretch the arms behind you, lift up into the chest, lift into the chin and then come forward, lifting the arms up as you hinge at the hips. Now you might want to just stay at halfway or you might want to go further but keeping the front chest lifted, keeping the arms extending up towards the ceiling, keeping the arms straight, lifting the arms, keeping the front chest lifted, just working with the breath. So in yoga class I used to go to, my 
yoga teacher used to get us into this position and then walk around the room and then hold onto the onto your um, onto your lower back and then draw your arms away from the body a little so just try and activate that action for yourself so it's a four standing forward bend but we're working to open up the shoulders at the same time And then lift the hands up to the ceiling and come back up into a standing position. Just observe the way that you have interlocked the fingers behind your back. And then interlock the fingers the kind of unnatural way with the other index finger on the top of the stack. And then again, straighten the arms. Squeeze the elbows together, draw the elbows to face the front of the room, and then lengthen the arms away. Lift up into the chest, and then hinge at the hips. Coming forwards all the time, lifting the arms up to the ceiling, but keeping the back straight. So it's quite easy to bend the back, so keep the back straight as you come forwards and down. Breathing evenly. See how far away you can get your arms. Drawing your arms towards the wall in front of you. Or the wall in front of your legs anyway. Okay, and then just gently come up and then just release your arms come into Tadasana. Just feel how your arms have almost got an energy of their own. Want to kind of lift out to the sides of the room. Stretch into the arms. And then Urdhvastasana, uh, just stretching the arms up, arms parallel, palms parallel, extending the arms up towards the ceiling. So I run out of ceiling height quite significantly here, so I'll have to just adjust my position a little bit. And then just very gently release. Down onto your knees, your hands, shoulder width apart. Step back, turn your toes under, have your feet hip width apart, and then come up into dog down. And then just gently come down, just sit back on your heels, big toes together, knees apart. And then come forward into Adamuka Virasana. Just stretching out the arms and the shoulders. Lengthening from the armpits down into the hips.
Okay, and then just sit back on your heels. Just observe the energy that you've released through your practice so far. And then we're going to come into your asana. So you might want to sit on a couple of blocks for your virasana. So have a couple of blocks to sit on. You can even have a lift on top of that, a blanket on top of that. Bring your knees together and then get your thumbs right into the backs of the knees as you and draw the calf flesh away from the backs of the knees as you sit yourself down. So make sure you have a base that you that, uh, that a secure base that you can sit comfortably on. If you need more lift, then put a folded blanket on top of the blocks. If you so not everyone will need all of those blocks, just see, maybe you can sit just between the feet directly on the floor. So I'm kind of halfway in between a full block and half a block, but if any doubt, go for the full block. Get your belt handy. And again, just put the belt over your shoulder. So try and keep the knees together. And then get your thumbs into the inner heels and then just gently rotate the inner heels out away from the hips. We're not trying to crack bones here. We're just trying to get the little toe side of the foot really firmly down on the floor. But it also really opens up stiff ankles a little to try and encourage that inner heel try let go and then see if you can get that inner heel to just rotate outwards of its own accord rather than kind of it wants to kind of collapse inwards to see if you can encourage it to draw outwards just lift up into the chest just observe that in virasana elevating into the spine is a little easier than in cross legs. So we're going to do go Makasana again. So stretch your left arm forward. Turn the palm all the way out. And remember, rotate the upper arm in the shoulder socket as you reach behind you. Turn in that upper arm in the shoulder socket. And then just again, assist that hand up your back. So taking hold of the belt if you need to reach up, reach in towards the ceiling and then reach down, take hold of the other hand or the belt. Just observe if there is any more space than there was at the beginning. Maybe you can creep the hands together a little more. But most significantly, is there any change in the breath? So I was finding it really difficult because of this really, really stiff shoulder to take deep inhalations. So just spend a little time just to take deep inhalations, deep exhalations. Breathing into any areas of resistance. Breathing into areas of resistance, breathing out of areas of resistance. Oh, we've been there for a little while to see if you can just creep your hands a little bit closer together. And then gently release the top hand. Just gently release the bottom arm and then stretch your arms down to the floor. Turn the palms to face 
outward so that the collarbone is broad. Listen to the breath. And then just bring the belt over to the other shoulder. Just lift up into the chest and stretch your right arm forwards, really spreading the fingers, spreading the palms, turning the upper arm in the socket as you reach behind you and then assist that arm up your back. Maybe instantly going for the belt if you know that you're going to need it. And then just reach up, reach out of the previous pose. It will still be in the shoulder. So just breathe into that area. And then reach down, see if you can take hold of the belt or your hand. And then creep the hands as close together as you can. And then pull the elbows apart. Breathing into areas of resistance. Breathing out of areas of resistance. Just listening to the breath. Trying to pull the elbows apart. And then very gently release the top arm. Just gently release bottom arm. And then come up onto your knees. And then come up into dog down just to release the feeling of the legs. Turn your toes under gently. And then come up into dog down. Just letting your legs recover, just feeling the warmth of the shoulders. Just listening to the sound of the breath. Okay, and then just come down onto your knees, come down onto your back. Or Sapta Badakanasana. And then just align yourself down the centre of the mat. Again, a good pose for period pose, just opening up the and softening the abdominal region. Just release into the floor for a moment. Stretch your arms up to the ceiling. Interlock the fingers, turn the palms all the way out. And then extend your arms along the floor. There's stiffness in your shoulders and you don't bring your arm, can't bring your arms to the floor, then have a blanket or a block underneath your hands just to Soften the shoulders. If there's stiffness in your hips, likewise put blocks underneath your thighs just to give you support. Breathing evenly and deeply listening to the breath.
just release your arms up to the ceiling again just swap the interlock of your fingers turn the palms all the way up squeezing the outer elbows in and then lengthening your arms along the floor And then release your arms down to the floor, unhook the fingers, just rest your hands on your lower ribs. And then gently draw your knees together, have the knees together and the feet apart for a moment. and then draw your knees in towards your chest just have a little rock from top to bottom from side to side just a gentle massage on the spine and then when you've recovered just rock yourself up into a seated position so we've worked a lot in shoulders but we've not worked a lot in legs so we're gonna go into um, Supta Virasana. So I've said recently that if a bolster isn't high enough for you, then give yourself some extra lift, have a couple of layers of blocks, and then put the bolster on top of that. If you've got more than one bolster, you might even want um, two bolsters to go back to. So just give yourself um, extra elevation if you need it. If you don't, then obviously you know just go with um, just go with the the um, the way that is comfortable for you. So have your belt handy as well, and we're just gonna bring our feet either side. Of the bolster so your toes should be able to touch your bolster but when when you go back you're not going to sit on the bolster so just make sure that your bolster is in a good straight line that you're in a straight line with the bolster and then get your thumbs into the backs of the knees and then draw the calf flesh out to the side as you come back if you're sitting on your bolster at this stage then just um, move it out of the way get your belt and then make it into a big loop and put the belt around the legs. And this will stop your knees from falling apart. This might be a bit strong, especially if your knees don't come down. If, if your knees lift off the floor, then you need more height underneath you. So you've got the, the belt around the legs and then you're just gonna lift up into the chest as you come down, you come down onto your elbows, lift in the chest, and then come down. If your head rolls back, then have a blanket for underneath your head. So just see if you can find comfort in the pose at first. Lengthen the, lengthen the tailbone away. Lengthen the sacrum spine away. Soften the abdomen. Just have your arms on the sides of the floor to start off with. Just breathing evenly and deeply. 
So you might find that the belt around your legs just adds an additional element of tension in your lumbar. So if it does, then just length, you can just loosen the belt a little if you need to, or lengthen the buttock flesh down towards your knees and then broaden the abdomen. And then we're going to raise our arms up to the ceiling, interlock the fingers, turn the legs all the way out. So, so turn the arms all the way out, palms of the hands all the way out, and then extend your arms along. They won't reach the floor probably, but just extend your arms away from the body. <coughs> Excuse me. So if it's difficult to stay, then put extra lift underneath your back, put a couple of blocks underneath the bolster, just to give you a little extra extension in the spine, just to give you a little bit of relief in the legs. Release your arms, swap the interlock of the fingers and turn the palms back out to the ceiling and then lengthen along the floor. Gently release your arms, just rest your arms at the sides of the body. Just listening to the breath, just pushing your in breath and out breath into areas of resistance. Okay, in a minute we're going to bring ourselves out of the pose. So push your elbows into the floor, lift up into the chest, come up onto your hands and then come up onto your knees, just loosen the belt, come up onto your knees and then just come up into the narrow Dog down, just allowing the legs to just gently recover, just gradually recovering. Bring your heels down just to gently release the ankles, tighten the kneecaps to just straighten out the legs. Let the legs really refresh. And when your legs have recovered, just come down onto your knees and then see yourself in cross legs.
So just sit in, in whichever cross legs is comfortable for you. And then hold onto your knees, lift up into your chest. Just observe that lightness of energy that comes from Sopta Vurasana. Take a deep inhalation and then turn to the right side with the exhalation. Using the out breath to intensify the turn. And then come back to the centre, lift up into the chest, driving the chest upwards, take a deep inhalation. And then turn to the left. And then come back to the centre, lift up into the chest, drive in the chest upwards. Just listen to the breath. And then just come down onto your back, get a bolster, for, sorry, not a bolster, a block for your back. And we're just going to come into Setu Banda. So we can bring yourself down onto the floor. Feet as close to the seat bones as you can and then lift the seat bones, adjust the shoulders so you come right on, up onto the tops of the shoulders. Place the block into the tailbone sacrum area. Hold onto the edges of the mat and then either stay with bent legs or stretch your legs out one at a time just make sure that that feels okay in your back and then just lengthen your legs away just breathing evenly and deeply listening to the breath and moving the in-breath and the out-breath into areas of resistance. Just feeling how you stretch out the front of the body and the abdomen and the pelvic region. Make sure that you tadasana rise, the legs turning the fronts of the thighs inwards. You're smoothing out the kinks in the back and the hips and the legs and the shoulders and the neck. Okay, and then just gently bring your feet back to the block or as close to the block as you can. And then 
right on the tops of the shoulders just maybe come up onto the tip toes in order to lift the tailbone up off the block and then adjust the shoulders immediately so that you can slowly roll down back onto your back and then draw the knees in towards your chest just have a little rock from side to side from top to bottom just ironing out any tension in your spine and then just gently roll onto your side for a moment and then sit yourself up and then just for the last couple of minutes just have a blanket from underneath your head just lay yourself down in a really good straight line for shavasana take your glasses off if you're wearing them just make sure you're in a good straight line and then release into the floor allow the physical body to consciously let go and hook in the muscles of the arms and the legs tuning into that feeling of energetic lightness feeling how that feeling of lightness radiates out from the bones into the muscles and the flesh and the skin. Skin in that feeling of energetic lightness. Just gently wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, and then bend your knees, draw your knees in towards your chest. Just have a little rock from side to side, from top to bottom, just a gentle massage on the spine. And then very gently roll over onto your right side, just stay down for a breath or two. And then straighten out the top leg, come back up into a seated position. Just the final cross legs with your hands in the mastic, just a final spinal lift. Draw your breath in through your nose, down into the abdomen. 
conscious of the energy that you have released through your practice this morning that good positive healthy flow of clean energy that the extensions and the forward bends and the twists and the inversions bring to the body and to the mind and then very gently release the chin down to meet the chest just acknowledge the positive energy you've created inside. And then send some of that positive energy out into the world. And then very gently release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards. And as you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open. And the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. So hopefully you feel like you've really lifted the energy of your shoulders and your hips and your legs give yourself good energy to put into your day so hopefully you'll join me